It's hard to live in a place where people are so ready. They're just on the precipice. They're waiting for you to fuck up. So they can just jump up and go, got ya. Uh, fucking putting your name, blasting you out on Facebook. Seven pages. I'm going to ruin your life. And look, I get it. I get call out culture. But you know what else you guys could do? When you get pissed off by someone's behavior, you could take them aside like a human being and go, we don't say oriental. You don't have to yell at them in public to make yourself look like a hero. I recently, I saw the other end of the spectrum. I got called out at a show. I was doing a joke about cannibalism. I did not realize that this was a hot button topic that we weren't supposed to be talking about, that cannibalism was a taboo subject. And I just went in balls deep into cannibalism. And, here, and I, here's, the, I'm not gonna do the whole joke, but here's kind of the, the outline of the joke I was doing as I was making a point about the fact that if you ever wanted to try human meat, I am convinced you could make this happen in Tokyo. Tokyo seems like the city that has a human meat supper club. Besides the tentacle porn. <laughs> and the fact that you can buy people's underpants and vending machines. Are you telling me that if you don't ask the right questions, someone's not gonna direct you to an underground human meat supper club? You fucking know those are real. You know there's a guy who's like, all right, shh, keep it down. I know what you're looking for. Okay, leave my yakisoba place. Go to that yakisoba place. <laughs> Take a right, go down the alley, you'll see a red door with your right hand knock the left side stereo mix of the drum solo from Inagata De Vita. <laughs> now, if you do that correctly, you'll be taken 12 miles under the Earth's crust, and the elevator doors will open on a low ceiling, dimly lit dining hall, and the Mater D will escort you over to a beautiful, hand blown glass aquarium filled with disgraced Japanese honormen swimming in sake. And then you pick the one you want and they scoop them out with a big net and they bring them over on a stainless steel drainage gurney. And then before the chef cuts into him, he grabs your hand and he makes eye contact and you guys cut together. That way if there's a federal raid, you're also complicit in the crime of cannibalism. Just the skeleton outline of the joke. This is a real thing that happened. A real person did this. A real adult with a backpack on, <laughs> indoors. <laughs> you guys know you don't have to fucking wear your backpack everywhere, right? You can take it off, put it under the seat. You don't all need your books all the time. When you reach adulthood, there are no more pop quizzes, okay? You don't need all of your things. How much fucking more space do you need? How much more space in a restaurant or a Barnes & Noble do you fucking need, all right? We're already nuts to butts on this planet. You need the extra six inches of spine getting in the way? Just take your goddamn backpack off. I implore you, you're grown-ups. This is a real thing, a person with a brain. It had to go around the committee in their brain. And then the committee rubber stamped it and went, sounds good, send it to the tongue police. Let's see what they say. And the tongue was like, fuck yeah. Let your flag fly, Neil. And this person said out loud to me, interrupted the show. I'm sorry, I, I really liked most of your set up till now. I just can't sit here in good conscience. As a paleontology student at the university and listen to you punch down on a marginalized group of indigenous people, cannibals are real people who've been economically displaced by the forestry industry, and they have real problems, and your white privilege is the reason why you have no empathy, and the reason why you'll never have to live on human meat. Fuck you, fuck you, that's what I said. <laughs> fuck you, F fuck you. Uh, and also fuck you for saying they're indigenous. That's racist as shit, okay? What, what do you think, all cannibals live in the jungle, you fucking racist? I was talking about Tokyo, which was clearly a metaphor for Germany. <laughs> I had, 
I had in Seattle, I had a person get mad at me for saying Hitler's name during a set. Also really happened. She stood up, put her fingers in her ears and went, ah. <laughs> and I was like, what? Why did you just do that? And her response was, um, I have Hitler fatigue. <laughs> no, you fucking don't have Hitler fatigue. <laughs> No, 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 that's a thing you made up. That's not a real fatigue. Also, that's the most privileged fatigue I've ever heard of in my life. That you just get to go through your life not having to hear Hitler's name because you're a gentle flower. Uh-uh. Right now, right here, we're all gonna come to an understanding. Whether you know it or not, you're supposed to say Hitler's name every day, 50 times, or he fucking comes back. Did you guys know that? It's called the reverse Beetlejuice. Look it up, it's a real thing. <laughs>